With the background of the exceptions now, what we are going to do is take a look at the section 4.1 of the document, and that kind of talks about the special registers. Now, as you can see, uh, you know, special registers are, well, only few, uh, but we also need to then recall now that our processor could operate or had this execution level of 0, 1, uh, 2, and 3, and some of these registers are going to be available only in EL1, EL2, and EL3. And they can actually have a separate copy uh, in each EL. So on the right now are those details, but let me quickly tell you what are the registers you know, that we would have. So, well, across the different EELs, we only have like one copy of the zero register and the program counter, right? And the stack pointer um, that is currently active can be of four different types, right? So each EL has kind of, you know, its own stack pointer. And why would that be? It's because you want to isolate one uh, execution layer from another, and so you would want to keep their stacks separate. Right. So let's say an app crashed because, you know, the stack overflow happened. Then the question is when you transfer the control uh, to handle that exception, to handle that crash to the operating system. So, OK, let's say the app was running here using, you know, SPEL0, stack pointer for the EL0. And let's say, you know, it ran out of the stack space. So an exception would happen that the operating system running in EL1 needs to handle but then to be able to do anything uh, you know the operating system also needs a stack and that stack will usually be uh, you know the memory region that is pointed to by the spel1 right and similarly there is spel2 there is spel3 now again um, if you know the idea of stack pointer is clear then know that el0 we do not handle any exception here you know we handle none of them so we only handle it in the you know underlying uh, or the higher els now then the question is you know to be able to save the processor state uh, th those kind of uh, when an exception happens we were wanting to save the processor state the information about what the cpu was doing and then we reasoned that the program counter and the p state uh, would be like the right registers to capture the information about like immediately and you know there there is more that happens but the software can take care of you know taking care uh, like saving the gprs right if those are also to be saved but which instruction to go back and execute after the exception and what was the state of the cpu when the exception happens uh, or happened that needs to be still preserved and saved so for that each el starting from el1 uh, you know up to el3 has this spsr saved program status register and the elr exception uh, link register an exception link register then you know ends up saving the pc value so it remembers you know what point to go back and start executing uh, the normal programs instructions and the p state is saved into spsr right and so this this becomes uh, even kind of you know more evident or this becomes more clear once we go to um once we go to let's say the exceptions uh, section which is 10.1 and then there is this wonderful diagram here which is explaining that you know a program was executing in EL0, uh, some exception happened here. So note how the program counter value was put into the ELR exception link register, and you know the program status was loaded into SPSR of the EL1. Uh, again, we, the exception happened in EL0, so the control is passed to EL1 in this case, right? And so this is saved, and now the exception is being handled in EL1, let's say, uh, when we now, you know, exception handling is over. So 
in an attempt to return back to this location, what the CPU does is it restores back the value from ELREL1 to the program counter and then restores back the SPSREL1 back to the P state, right? And in between somewhere here and somewhere here, there can be stored uh, GPR. Like you can, like in the handler itself, the handler can make sure that the, the registers that it's going to touch and, you know, use for computation, it can save the registers of the program elsewhere, typically on a stack, then, you know, corrupt the, uh, the GPRs and while exiting it can restore back, right? So at this point you have, uh, well, at this point you have the same state of the CPU as it was before the exception happened. One other thing is, always 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 the program counter is pointing to the next instruction right so let's say we had for example four instructions and the cpu was executing instruction two then pc or program counter would be pointing to uh, you know the next instruction and so what happens is when we save this in the elr right so elr will equal to three when we return back, we say, hey, PC was pointing to three, and so start fetching instruction from there. You know, that's that's one other important thing. All right, so with this then, uh, we are pretty much, uh, you know, done with the registers that you should be remembering. And let's just quickly go back and talk about those. So zero register, program counter, stack pointer, uh, and then program status register, uh, uh, SPSR, and ELR for exception related things. And then as we move forward, um, you know, there is our P state register uh, somewhere. It should be, yes, there is P state register and then the 32 or 31 uh, general purpose registers. So if you happen to know this much, you can pretty much, you know, uh, be useful on a team that is working with the A class CPU and kind of, you know, uh, also be able to discuss with them and find out more information. All right, so next what we do is we dive into a case study where I walk you through some boot up code and then kind of, you know, show as to what all is happening and how the CPU state is changing.